Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Palette of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new Warhammer painting video. Now, as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below. I love hearing back from you guys, it goes a massive way to help the channel too. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So, in this video, I'm going to go over three different colour schemes that I have used for my most recent Celestial Dracula lines. Now, before I have done a grey one, which I did a painting video of that uh, ages ago when we got the first one that we got. And with this one, I've done three different colours, all using very, very similar techniques. Now, with all three of these colours, you can choose to use them however you want, you can modify them however you want, and you can get some really, really good looking results that make them look very unique. So, without further ado, let's crack on with it. So, starting off, I use Mechanica Standard Grey as a base coat for each of these models. And for this one, I'm using Mournfang Brown as the first layer. Now, Mournfang Brown is a pretty handy colour. It looks pretty cool. Uh, it's quite an earthy, browny colour that's quite bright and not too dark. And it works very, very well when you use certain shades over the top of it. Talking of these shades, I use Seraphine Sepia. Now, Seraphine CP works very, very well with this colour because it really does give a warmth in all them recesses on the entire model. So it works very, very well. Then once all that's dry, layer back over with Morphine Brown over the main areas just to reintroduce that warmth to it. So keep it that kind of muted tones uh, do not go into the recesses with it too heavily and you can get a very very nice look from the entire model just with those simple colours in all honesty. And now you kind of have free reign over how you want all them scales to look. Now I've used Dryad Bark. Now Dryad Bark is a darker brown, uh, a more earthy brown and it's very very handy it looks like a bark color uh, but over these scales it stands out because the more found brown is a little bit brighter but this is uh, a, you know it does kind of just makes that color pop a little bit better as you can see here now over the muzzle of this track line I've decided to go for a slightly different color and I'm using some Zandri dust over the front of it this is kind of lightens it up and gives it a bit more of a unique look so you can do this over the whole underside if you wanted to and the pads of the feet and everything like that if you wanted to because they would not normally be the same colour as the entirety of the Draca line if you want to go that extra mile. Now if you do want to go that extra mile if you, all you do is use Seraphine sepia over the top of it as well and then layer it back over with uh, Sandry Dust and of course a bit of little bits of other pieces, bits and pieces like for instance um, Wraithbone is a very very good highlight for Xandri dust and then all you want to do is contrast them paints with using stuff like uh, good old Abaddon black for the things like the claws and stuff like that make sure you paint up the teeth using things like Corax white make sure you paint them gums though do not leave them grey do not leave them white you can use some very nice colours over the top of them And as you can see, I'm just layering over the seraphine sepia over the mouth of it, and I've gone onto the neck a little bit onto that throat, uh, and it stands out very nice. Now, if you want to highlight areas of a dryad bark, use Gorefall Brown. It works very, very nicely and gives it a very nice edge highlight. Now, jumping onto the second one, I am literally layering over the sandry dust within, over the entirety of this model. Now, this works very, very well. It's a lighter colour but it still has that earthy kind of brown kind of texture and colour to it. Uh, and it looks a little bit more lizard-like in a lot of ways and works very, very well with what the Celestial Dracula line kind of uh, resembles. Now, when that was all dry, I layered over the contrast paint Skeleton Horde. Now, you can use Andri uh, like Seraphine Sepia if you wanted to. However, I chose Skeleton Horde because it's a little bit thicker and has an ever so slight difference to the pigment as well for what uh, Seraphine Sepia would have. And it works very, very well as kind of a bit of a shade, but also a kind of over the color top kind of color. 
Now, if you do leave it as an overtop kind of colour, it will look quite patchy in a lot of places. So layer back over with Zandri Dust and it will help a lot with that kind of colour scheme if you wish to go for that slightly paler Dracula line. And then it's time to paint up all them scales. So for the scales, I've used Doom Ball Brown. Now, I don't use Doom Ball Brown very often, but it, I think it stands out. It works very, very well with this color scheme. Has that kind of earthiness, has that texture to it, has that kind of, that, that kind of lizard-like feel, which is also very, very good and very, very handy to have. And then moving on to the third one, as a very, very quick scheme, I used Wraith Bone over Mechanica Standard Grey. And this will give you a very pale looking Celestial Dracoline. Now, using Wraith Bone, you may want to use a couple of coats of this as well, because it is a bit thinner, it will look a bit patchy in places. And then all I layered over was with Seraphine Sepia. You could use Skeleton Horde if you wanted to with this. Uh, you can use, if you wanted to, a slightly different colour. So you could go for a kind of like a bluish colour if you wanted to, or a reddish colour, and you will get a very, very nice look out of it as well. Uh, but with this one, I'd just lay it over. And then go back over it with Wraith Bone. Go all over them flat areas, make it look stand, make it stand out. It looks very, very nice. Works wonders on this colour scheme as well. And then, as a weird kind of option, I've gone for Yakero Orange as a kind of base coat over all the scales and all them kind of spines along the Dracoline's back and down onto its tail and everything like that because it stands out a little bit different. It gives it a very nice hue to it and kind of makes it kind of sing a little bit of a different kind of colour scheme, which is also very, very nice. And then, Instead of highlighting it or kind of doing a wash over it, I used Griffhound Orange over the top. This will save you a lot of hassle because it's a contrast paint of having to highlight each individual scale or making sure that you go over the right areas with a shade or anything like that. The Griffhound Orange will do both jobs for you. And that's it. Very, very simple techniques. Very, very simple colour schemes. Uh, you can make your stand out just as equally as this in many, many ways. So if you wish to, you could go for kind of blue colours, you could go for greens, you could go for whatever you want. But that is now four different colour schemes I have done for the Celestial Dracolines, and I'm happy with each one of them. I think they look really, really cool. Personally, I think the Wraithbone colour one stands out the most and it is the nicest looking out of all of them uh, and just kind of fits that deserty kind of feel that I decided I wanted out of this Celestial Dracoline. But otherwise, have fun with it. Let me know what your suggestions are for what you'd paint up these Celestial Dracolines, that type of thing, um, in the comments down below or even on my Discord page. You're absolutely fine to jump, come and jump in. It's, you know, there is no commitment there fun place to have a bit of chat about Warhammer stuff and with that said thank you very very much for watching and I'll uh, catch you in the near future bye bye now